it's great to have you all here. Thanks for attending this session. I hope you've enjoyed the day. I've um, followed along on Twitter, so I don't give everyone my flu. Um, and it's, it seems pretty exciting as far as the um, engagement with the talks and everything today. So I hope you've gotten a lot out of it. Um, so my talk is around storytelling with data because I was trying to think up a good uh, title that would uh, get you in here. But really what I would have called it would be building a data evaluation framework for developer evangelism, which probably I wasn't sure would get as many people um, to come along to it. Um, so a little bit about me. So uh, there's my Twitter handle at the top um, because I'll make sure I put these slides up on Twitter because there's some links in them so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so I do some industry writing and analysis around the API industry. I work with businesses around helping them open their APIs. Um, and then I'm working with John Musser, the founder of, um, uh, progr uh, founder of Programmable Web and API Science to build a tool to measure platform intelligence. Um, and also my background is uh, actually in community health data evaluation. So I was doing a lot of work with cities designing uh, data evaluation systems around health and wellbeing um, for local populations. And I use a lot of that sort of background in the work I do today. So what I'm going to do is talk through what stories do you need to tell, a little bit of the research, um, how to build an ev a developer evangelism evaluation framework, the YARP model, um, which everyone seems to be referencing Phil Legetta, and um, that's one of his ideas, uh, and then an example, or you know, just s s starting some ideas around what's the sort of things you should measure. Can I just ask quickly, how many people here are working for like API providers where your central product is an API? Yeah, and then how many are working with like um, uh, SaaS tools where you've got an API? Like, yeah. Is there anyone working for a more traditional business who is then opening APIs? Yeah, we've got a few of everyone, that's great. Cool. Um, <clears throat> so some of the stories that you might want to tell uh, with your API. Um, so you might want to, for example, you might want to be able to tell people that your uh, SDKs are actually bringing in new business to, to your uh, company and then talking about how um, uh, that's happening and the contribution those SDKs are making as far as bringing in new developers who are then building new products that are then selling. Um, uh, you might be wanting to sh show that there's uh, that you've got a stronger developer market share from your because of your APIs, and that that's again uh, increasing revenue. And then as a result, you might be wanting to ask your uh, CFO or some higher ups to be able to allocate more budget to your developer evangelism program because it's sort of um, uh, turning the wheels of your uh, company's budget. Or you might want to be uh, trying to push the idea that you actually need a broader range of API products because you've had success with one uh, API and then these are meant to be uh, the golden eggs uh, there of the multiple APIs. Apologies for my bad uh, sketch drawing. Um, see, so they're the sorts of stories and then data will back the, all of that up. How many people are sort of measuring elements of their uh, developer program at the moment? Just a couple, yeah. Okay, um, cool. So then hopefully then this will be useful as far as getting started with some of those ideas. Here's some readings, like I say, um, I've got an, I'll put it up on Twitter, the slides so you can click through to those, but they're a really good start for um, understanding some of the ideas around how do you measure your developer uh, engagement program. Uh, we've also, I've also been looking at speaking with a lot of uh, developer programs and asking about what people are measuring at the moment. So monthly active users is quite a common uh, a measure that people are using. Um, number of API calls sh sort of demonstrates the overall usage of your APIs. Um, I quite like, I've heard that some people uh, are measuring the specific endpoint usage because that, from out of that, they're then being able to tell um, some of the use cases that the end developers are having with their APIs. 
Um, Net promoter score is a big one. I think that this one you sort of see more from companies that are either moving to IPO or have actually try, have then sort of moved to be on the public market um, because that's something that their boards understand um, and their shareholders understand. So that's sort of a big one. Personally, I find it too much of a vanity metric and I think that there are cleverer ways to measure um, net promoter score. Like, so going back to my community health background, one of the things we used to do would be interview uh, people uh, at this community centre around um, what did they want to do in their uh, in their free time because we had a bus access and we wanted to offer that bus to these community centre um, members and the community centre members all said oh we want to go to the gallery and we, we want to go to museums so we organised a bus and no one came on the bus to the gallery or the museums and then we asked them you know why didn't you come and, and it was like well that's what we're expected to say every time actually we just want to go to the new Westfield shopping mall that's just been set up and you know so we ended up doing the bus out to there so some Sometimes when you ask people, um, you know, the, some stuff like the net promoter, you know, like ask them, they say, sure, sure, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, I would um, uh, definitely uh, recommend this to their friends, uh, to my friends. And, and actually, they probably haven't recommended it at all. And I think it's much more useful to look at, uh, for that sort of thing, it's much more useful to look at, say, for example, contributions to a GitHub repo or uh, people writing blogs on their own blog site um, that are talking about how to use your API, that sort of thing would be a better metric, I think, um, for that sort of thing. Um, or by giving away the discount code. So if someone signs up uh, via a discount code and they get a certain number of free um, uh, free calls or uh, months or whatever, then again, that's sort of that better proof, I think, of net promoter score. Um, and then revenue generated from integrated apps. I'll come back to this point in a bit, but um, so mostly the SaaS vendors are starting to do this. So um, Intuit, who do FreshBooks, measure um, the number of apps that are built that inter integrate with um, their FreshBooks, and then they measure the revenue that those apps are bringing to them. Overall, so far, um, uh, John Musser and I have identified 63 different metrics for measuring developer evangelism success, and at the moment we're going through and working out, you know, what's the pros and cons of using each one, you know, what can they really tell us and where do they fall over and all of that sort of stuff. So we'll have that uh, released shortly, so um, uh, through my... Uh, contact details that I gave earlier, you can find out about that too if you're interested and I'll pass on to um, the good people at devrel.net. Okay, what's, what's more difficult to measure? One of the big ones is how do you measure um, your involvement in conference, in conference, uh, conference activities? Like if you've got a booth that you've paid money for at a, at a um, conference or if you're running a workshop at a conference, how do you track the developers who come along to there and then end up going on to be your uh, regular developers? When I've asked developer evangelists about this in the past, then they normally tend to say they look at Google Analytics like the week after the event and then just sort of try to see if there's been a spike in people coming to their website. But I think there's, pardon me, there's other ways that we can start measuring um, that customer journey or that developer journey as far as how they come on board without having to do the, that horrible experience of when you get to the door, there's someone standing there trying to do the QR code uh, for you. Um, so, yeah, so I think that will be, that's one that um, I constantly come across as far as API providers are interested in measuring. The, I think um, which programming language resources are converting more developers is, is an interesting question. And then, because that gives you some look into uh, your developer community and what uh, languages they're using. But then there's, it's also great to do this whole two year, five year to sort of look. So you'd be looking at, okay, what languages are people using now? What's the fastest growing languages that people might be using in our field in a couple of years? And are we ready? Are we starting to build resources for those languages as well? Um, time to first API call is really difficult to measure because you're not actually pair programming with developers to be able to sit next to them and sort of see how often, uh, see how quickly they are um, uh, on board. But I think there's, some, there's a number of uh, metrics that you can use to sort of get you to that point of time to first API call. So uh, you know, using cookies, I guess, on your website, so people who come to your website 
um, and then looking at the difference between the number of people who come to your developer portal and those who sign up. Uh, who register and then the time length between the people who register and um, them getting an API key if uh, and then you know then looking at that that API key and when it was sort of used in some sort of authentication process or some sort of um, uh, uh, actual making of an API call uh, so but uh, you know like that's uh, th th I think we need some work around being able to do some of that. I've also heard, I've got a, a, a model for being able to sort of segment your developers as they're coming on board, which I'll show in a, a minute. But I've also heard that some API providers, while that's all well and good, for certainly for follow-up with those uh, developers uh, in different, you know, once they're first signed up, for uh, a developer portal, for you know, on the de developer portal, that for some API providers, it all comes down to time to first API call. Like the people, the developers who, who make that first API call, that's the time to increase uh, engagement because they're the ones who are actually have f have sorted out that they do need uh, your API and are, are willing to use it. And then there's revenue impact of developer evangelism, which is surprising. Um, that it's so difficult to measure, but I'm, I'm hearing constantly it's still one that's, um, that people are um, uh, having a struggle with. So all, all up, it's a sort of bit like multi, uh, a multiplayer uh, online gaming. Uh, <laughs> look it up. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Um, so in that, uh, within an API provider, that, or within your company, or within your business, there's going to be a whole range of people who all need different types of data in order to play. So they're, they're, all of them have different needs as far as what they're actually uh, wanting from, uh, for, uh, from proof around developer evangelism and the impact that it's having. So one model that helps us get to be able to share all of that different sort of data is the YARP model, um, which is really sort of like a, the, it's, it's, the, it's um, looking at the developer funnel. So it's the sort of standard in uh, marketing where you have, um, uh, um, by the way, so originally Phil Legetta had called it the ARP model and then he was asking could someone try to figure out a way to put a Y in front of it because then there's a, a Simon Pegg um, a hot fuzz reference to Yarp, so um, I've tried to help out where I could. So then the model really goes through, first of all, I think the starting point needs to be your goals or the why, you know? So like looking broadly, more broadly, rather than just at your developer evangelism efforts, what's the goal of the business? Why have you got APIs? Like sometimes it's pretty straightforward because it's um, that your API is your business product, but other times it's you know because you're opening up APIs like the people who are saying they're from traditional business. Maybe it's in order to make partners relationships stronger and to um, uh, outsource the onboarding effort so the partners have to do all the integration costs. Um, or it might be that you're trying to, um, uh, you're a SaaS vendor and you're trying to uh, reach new markets by releasing APIs and having other people create apps or because of the customer stickiness that will come because customers have a broader range of um, apps that they can use in con uh, or via your APIs. So I think that is a starting point for under. So uh, you know, here I've got it. Does this, oh yeah, here I've got it. So this is sort of the context, if you like. So I think it's important to always start with that. Then we've got the sort of the traditional developer, uh, 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 or the d traditional sort of marketing funnel, if you like. So you know, like awareness of like where did people find out about um, the platform, about the developer portal, and what it does. How many are signing up? Um, how many are then active? Um, who key, who's now actually regularly using your APIs? Are they actually turning into commercial developers where they're actually building commercial products and uh, selling those commercial products or those integrations uh, with your APIs? Um, are they telling other people or, or sharing their successes around using your API? And then I like the one that Phil added here too, uh, which is product. So really it's about like, then the, the, those developers who are contributing back to the product. So for example, by writing new API wrappers, by contributing to any um, uh, GitHub repos that you might have, um, uh, by sort of providing feedback on your product and sort of suggesting how to improve it, all of those sorts of measures. So um, ideally you'd actually have, I guess, a, um, 
an arrow that would go from the product back up to the top because it's sort of like bringing in new awareness even. So they're the sort of buckets that you could have a metric around uh, for each of those. So then coming back to my um, health background, uh, in Australia we had this thing called HARP. So in HARP it was hospital admission uh, risk prevention. So basically there's a whole heap of data sets that you can have that would uh, start to flag and identify that people were going to be readmitted to hospital. But then the trick is that if you can, you really want to distill that down to like three core metrics. And it was basically, had they already been admitted once in the past six months? Uh, did they have someone who they could go home to support with? And was it cardiovascular or pulmonary, dis uh, pulmonary disease? So if, it was one, if they had those three things, tick, 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 then they will get this uh, additional support in the home so that they don't get returning to hospital, if you like. And I think that's the thing with the YARP, because, you know, like having a bucket or having metrics around each of those is just overkilling it when you're coming from a place where you don't, uh, where you're just starting on the metrics journey. So I think take the HARP approach and just uh, look at one, two, three, or four. So I would suggest as a minimum data evaluation framework, first of all, think about the stories that you want to tell with your data. Like, What's the frustrating proof that you need to give as to your existence? Like when you know, like if you're trying to argue for a greater increase of budget, because or for, to attend a conference, uh, to pr build, to prioritise a particular set of resources, what's the sticking point there as far as um, the what data will help you make that um, uh, make that case more strongly? You know, so then maybe even it's the first step is just keeping a track of some of those, oh, if only they understood me sort of moments, you know. Then the second thing I would suggest is choosing four areas depending on the maturity of your API program. And so sometimes uh, you'll be measuring outputs instead of outcomes. Ideally, you're measuring outcomes, like what's the actual impact that it's having. But for some cases, it might be too early along the journey to be able to measure those outcomes. So you'd then just be measuring outputs where you've got an assumption that if you create these things, then it's gonna lead to these outcomes. I'll give you an example of that in a minute. Um, and then also, uh, I've said choose four areas, but make sure that the wider business goals is one of the four. So choose three, uh, three areas, I guess. Okay, so for example, the why for this one is, so the business goal is entering new markets or extending customer reach through third party providers. So then you're wanting to come up with a metric that's going to measure that. So again, I can share this with you if you like, but I've come up with a um, process where you can start segmenting your developer uh, audience once they come on board. So that basically you'd sign up to your developer portal, say through MailChimp, then you'd use Zapier to be able to pull those MailChimp emails into a Google spreadsheet. Then you use the Clearbit API to be able to then populate all of the data. So you've got that email and then you put in their work role, their Twitter feed, their um, LinkedIn or whatever. So you've got that detail. Then you can actually uh, segment by industry that they're working in or you could segment by, um, what I was suggesting is you segment them by um, their organisational role. So if they're like um, uh, clearly in a position that, uh, that sort of smells like decision maker, then maybe you put them off to, you give those names to a particular developer evangelist for more one-to-one -one follow up. And if it's, um, but if it's more hobbyist user, then maybe you keep them going with the self-serve sort of stuff. So that's so you know. So then you might be able to get further along with your developer evangelism by more uh, by uh, quickly identifying who's your commercial opportunities. But at the same time, it's giving you some data on the industry background. So if your goal is to show you're entering new markets, then you could actually slice that sort of data by the different industry groups that those developers represent. And so here's the, that output rather than outcome. But so, because you, you're sort of showing that, okay, of all the developers that are signing up, X are coming from this new market that we, you know, either geographic or um, industry that we hadn't previous, that we had wanted to reach. So you sort of can start to show that there's some traction there and then maybe that um, pushes for being able to ask for the sort of resources or prioritization to, to do more work for those industries. Uh, developing resources for those sort of industry developers. Um, so then an R, so retaining developers and keeping them activated. So for here, um, one metric that might work will be support calls that do not escalate. 
So you're wanting to really check that your documentation has this feedback mechanism. So uh, starting, so here, um, you know, like, uh, is our documentation team, is, are we giving the sort of documentation that is allowing people to solve their own problems, you know? So the good thing about this sort of, um, uh, having this as, a, as one of your metrics is that, um, uh, you also get to start seeing, well, one, you, you get to play more of a relationship across your organisation. So you start talking to sales engineers and support agents as well and thinking, thanks, and then thinking about um, what you have to do as far as um, uh, uh, what they need in their job to, for, for, um, for the API to continue retaining developers and growing. So you can sort of, uh, so it sort of brings you into greater uh, internal team discussions, which is awesome um, uh, for, the for the people I've heard that have done that. Um, and, but then also it means that you're there at the front end of hearing what are the use cases of your APIs. So you start to hear how your customers are actually integrating the APIs, what they're building with them, what's interesting for them and what they want to try to do in what order, that sort of stuff. So even though it's a sort of metric that's just, you know, about support calls that do not escalate, you can also, and I think Matthew Bernier had a talk about this earlier today, about that role between product management and developer relations. Um, so, and it's really, you know, this is, um, uh, th this is a good example of that. So you've got your support calls, which is then helping uh, show that you know your developer portal and all of the rest is actually making it is reducing costs of managing support because um, developers can help themselves. Um, but then also out of it, you're building stronger relationships across the business so that you can identify what some of those new use cases that customers have and what sort of um, resources that they might need to build. So in, in some cases, I've heard things like uh, support agents say that they constantly are answering this same question. So then the uh, developer engagement team has been able to build new resources that particularly speak to, you know, so that in future the support agent can say, oh, re read this, you know, instead of like answer or, you know, writing that long email each time. And then the R, the revenue. So one of the, uh, one of the ones I like to look at here is revenue g is generated from third party apps. So for example, Atlassian, they have a really simple share, a revenue share model with any developers that use their APIs to build like extensions for Atlassian products. And that's basically a 25% revenue share model. So if you build uh, any sort of um, uh, hip chat extension or Confluence extension or Jira or whatever, um, and then you make it available available in the Atlassian marketplace and you charge for it, um, the uh, end customer gets access to that and Atlassian, uh, and you get paid for it and then Atlassian gets 25% of whatever your cover price was. So um, uh, over five years, Atlassian has made 250 million in sales, which for them means 62 and a half million. So then again, so, you know, like just being able to show that revenue benefit back to the organisation through the APIs, none of that would have been available if the APIs weren't available. And in fact, you could say more than that because those uh, customers who are using Atlassian, um, uh, they would then, uh, they might be looking at other solutions that do have those complementary products. So you could actually lose some of your customer, your existing customer base as well. So. Uh, and then the, for the product, developers so supporting developers. So here, uh, what I really like is the SendGrid. Um, SendGrid did a um, Hacktoberfest where they then where they just promoted to encourage people to actually contribute to their uh, their GitHub repos over the month. And I don't think you can see it very clearly here, but it says 347 uh, contributors to their docs. So during that month, you know, during that month, uh, a big swag of those. Um, contributors were people who were like helping them refine their documentation and improve it um, via GitHub. So, you know, one of the, and I think again, like I was saying earlier, I think this is one of those better measures than net promoter score, gives you, some, gives you a bit more um, real world. Number of developers writing API wrappers or tutorials on their own sites, and number of developers contributing to GitHub repos. Okay, um, that was that's really just try to get you started, so that um, you know hopefully that you could think up um, uh, three or four um, metrics to start measuring the impact of your developer engagement effort, and then you've got those um, going forward to be able to talk about uh, why your API. Uh, developer evangelism efforts are uh, so great and why you should need more of it. 
Okay, thanks.